Hello and welcome to The Real Deal for Deercrit. This is where we talk to real people about real issues and we dig a little bit deeper than normal. In our first series, I'm going to catch up with Peter Hutton from Hutton and Hutton. I've admired Peter's prowess for years and his ability to build a brand. He's done it several times. And in this episode, I talk to him about the challenges of building his brand. How did he identify it and how has he built on it? I know you're going to enjoy it. Back in just a moment with Peter Hutton. So how I designed the H&H &H brand was I went out and got inspiration first. So I went online, I studied companies from all around the world and not very many real estate agencies actually, a lot of uh, fashion brands, car brands, luxury brands, and also brands that are really appealed to me, like the brands that I connected with. They were the brands that I went looking for and I tried to understand them, what, what was the appeal about them, how do they look, how do they feel. And once I got that understanding that sort of concept in my head of, of, of that brand that I'd like to emulate but in real estate and in Brisbane, uh, then I started to think about the design and how it could look on paper, on a website. But yeah, it all started with that sort of that kernel of an idea of who are they that I want to emulate and, and what are their key values and qualities, both visually uh, their touch, you know, their, their touch points, um, uh, how the market and how their audience would relate to them. And then once I got that clear in my head, I just went out and emulated that, but created it my own way. I think Picasso said, don't copy, steal, you know, so I was stealing ideas, um, but completely making it my own. I did go to other, some real estate firms. It wouldn't be true to say that I didn't look at real estate firms. So yes, I started looking interstate, Sydney and Melbourne, had a bit of an idea there. And New York, I looked at a few different agencies. Obviously there's Corcoran's and there's, uh, there's some great brands in the United States. But I actually purposely tried to avoid being inspired by other real estate businesses because I felt if I, if I started um, if my inspiration became uh, too closely aligned to other real estate businesses, that would be too easy for another agency to emulate what I'm doing. And it, I wouldn't stand out as much as I hoped to stand out. So really when I created the brand in the first instance, what part of that inspiration was, it's gotta be different, it's gotta be fresh, it's gotta be new, so it can't be dictated by the past in terms of what other real estate agencies have created. A brand is actually the, the logo, of course, the name, of course, and it's a, it's a lot more. I hear people say uh, logo and name is not the brand. Well, that's not quite true because if you get a Mercedes Benz and you took the logo off it and drove it around, nobody would want that car. They want the car because the symbol is there. So the logo is a symbol and it's a symbol that people recognize easily and they can remember it and, uh, and it says something and they relate to that symbol. So a logo and a name is actually really critically important in a brand. 
but then the brand is that, but it's also a lot, lot more. Like that's the tip of the iceberg. That's just the, the starting point of, of, of the repetition of the brand, of getting known out there. But what really drives a brand is the ethos of the brand. And the best brands have an ethos and they have a, they have a, a really big idea of themselves of where they're heading. Great brands sort of uh, attract people because people get that ethos and they get where they're going and they want to be swept up in that or, or they want to be branded that way themselves to say, I'm like that. People at Drive Mercs are trying to actually, you know, say, I'm like this. You know, so that's, that's really critically important with the brand. My top three branding tips are, firstly, know who you are. Really decide who you want to be and how you want to be perceived in the world and then find a way to do that. The second one is to find out what you love. Like really, what do you love about other businesses? What, and what would you love to create? That's really very, very important. So with my brand, I, I considered that. What would I love to create? What would I love to, how would I love to be seen? And how would I love to um, put that into the world? Finally, and this is one that I've used a lot over the years, and, and that is, Find an enemy or find somebody who you feel you'd like to oppose or be opposite to. And, and not from a critical sense, not from a sense that they're doing it wrong or bad, but actually it's better to choose a bigger foe, somebody who's very successful in the industry that you're competing with. So it doesn't matter whether you're a real estate agency or whatever, whatever business you're in. It's great to find that opposite and then be the opposite of that because then it's very easy to, to define yourself. I think one of the most important because if you copy other brands, you then become no different. You have to avoid doing that at all costs and the easiest way is to find out what you don't want to be and be the opposite. Wouldn't be complete unless you showed us your brand, shall you? <laughs> this is my, this is my uh, brand, H&H, &H, and of course we're Hutton and Hutton, but simply H&H, &H, and that's what we want to be remembered, those two little letters in the end, and uh, it's very simple, but hopefully very memorable. A brand is so much more than a logo, more than a slogan, and more than even the name of your business. All of those elements are important, as Peter said, and they all play an important part in building your brand. Those three tips from Peter right at the end, very, very insightful as well. All the best with building your brand. Thanks for being with us. Thanks to Peter Hutton from Hutton and Hutton. I'm Kevin Turner, and I'll see you next time right here at The Real Deal.